Hey there, everybody. It's me, your boy, Everything, and welcome to the Waddle series. This week, the Everything series is back, and even better, I'll let you guys choose the topic of this one. Oh boy, the LA, it absolutely crushed it. Today, we're going to talk all about it. The LA was first revealed to the community at Minecraft Live 2021, or technically a little bit before. It was the mob phone mob. But did you know that this mystical glowing fairy mob thing, whatever it is, is actually from before the mob vote? The concept for the LA first popped up during the development of the Nether update, actually. Then check this out. The LA back then looked completely different. It's basically like take the head of the modern LA and that's it. Just take the head of the modern LA. So the LA wasn't always in the wild update and the LA, it actually wasn't always called the LA either. A couple development names for the LA, the Wisp and the Pixie. Of course, we know how it goes. The LA ended up not making it into the Nether update, which is a little bit unfortunate because imagine how well this thing would have fit in the Soul Sand Valley. I mean, the LA, the blue fire, they match like literally perfectly. Imagine how cool it would have been to head into the Soul Sand Valley and rescue an LA. Fast forward to the fall, and of course, the LA crushes it in the mob vote. 22W13A rolls around, and the LA is added to Minecraft. If you like the LA, then remember to drop a like on these videos, and if you hate the LA, remember to also drop a like on these videos. Thank you. Let's talk a little bit about the statistics of the LA. The LA has 20 health total, which is actually going to be the same amount of health exactly as the player. However, the LA has something that the player doesn't have, a regeneration ability. If the LA unfortunately takes damage somehow, it's not all bad news for the thing. It has a regeneration ability of 2 health per second, which is kind of insane. Now the LA's hitbox, it's absolutely tiny, but it's actually a little bit bigger than half a block. The LA's hitbox is 0 0.6 by 0 0.6. As we can see here, the LA definitely fits inside of a normal block, which means it can fit through a 1 by 1 hole. But as we can see here, the LA is just going to be way too tall to be able to fit through a half block space. Keep that in mind when you're setting up your sorters. By far, one of my favorite things about the LA is how unique it is to actually find this thing. Locating an LA is unlike any other mob in the entire game. Now, when it comes to locating the LA, it could potentially be a little bit tricky depending on how lucky you are. If your luck is just off the charts, then you have an outpost inside of your world, and even more importantly, at that outpost, you have a cage, and even more importantly than just the cage, the LA. Inside of that cage, you could have one to three LA. Ah, how many times have I said LA differently in this video so far? Hmm, at least one or three. The outpost could work, but it's not a guarantee. There's another option, and that other option might be better, but it's still not a guarantee. The Woodland Mansion is the other location that you'll be able to rescue the LA from. If you're looking for an LA, try the Woodland Mansion. You can also find LA generating in with the Woodland Mansion in a specific room. If you're looking for LA, then you're going to want to look for a Woodland Mansion with a jail cell room. Now, the nice thing about this jail cell room inside the Woodland Mansion is there's more than one jail cell. I mean, check this out. We have one, two, three, and then four right here. Inside of every single jail cell, just like the outpost cage, you can find one to three LA. I mean, check this out right here in this room. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight LA inside of this single room. But wait, there's more. There's more than one jail room inside of this Woodland Mansion, too. And that's one of the cool things about the Woodland Mansion. You could absolutely have more than one jail room, which means even more LA. One of the potential downsides of looking for a Woodland Mansion for the LA, though, it's not a guarantee. Just like with the Outpost, you can unfortunately have a Woodland Mansion with zero LA total. And that's sad. Outpost or Mansion, it doesn't matter. An LA is an LA. And once you've successfully located an LA, if you want to save the thing, there's one big thing you need to do. Well, I guess maybe like two big things you need to do. And so over here, I have a couple alley generated into this outpost. If I wanted to make these alley mine or like tame them, all I need to do is basically give them an item. Once I've given the alley an item, it has successfully been tamed, if you want to call it that. Basically, it's my alley now. Now, of course, here's the thing. Because of where you find the alley, you're probably going to want to move. You're going to want to run away as fast as you can. Will the alley be able to catch up? Yes, most likely they will. As long as you have set them free from the cage and they're not stuck on things that they get stuck on, like fences and walls, you could just run. The LA is basically a champ when it comes to keeping up with you. The LA will be able to follow you up to 64 blocks away, even if it doesn't have a direct line of sight. But keep in mind, if the LA is stuck somewhere, it will be stuck there. Then just stay there. Now, you don't have to worry about it despawning. It won't despawn, but it'll be stuck and you'll have to come back and find it. What if you had a bow and you're like just not a very good shot? So maybe that means that like you have a mending bow or something. What if you accidentally hit the LA? Well, it doesn't matter. You can't accidentally hit the LA. Once the LA has an item, it is immune to damage from the players. So I can swing my axe at this LA all I want and nothing's going to happen. But maybe consider, you know, just not being a monster and to not trying to attack the LA. There's no point. What does the LA drop? If somehow you're able to take out an LA, well, surprise, surprise, you're going to get absolutely nothing. The LA does not drop anything at all. It's literally not worth it.
just like all other mobs in the game the alley can definitely go into other dimensions as well an easy way to get the alley into let's say the nether is give the alley an item then drop a different item on the ground hey alley look 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 get this once the alley remembers what its job actually is you can push the alley right into the portal in minecraft the alley's main function is collecting items for you to kick this all off you're gonna have to give the alley an item now the alley has an interesting inventory that has two slots one of those slots is for whatever's in its hand and that's a stack of one meaning in its hands the alley will only ever stack one item no more than one but then there's more the alley has more room inside of itself uh, somewhere maybe the head because it's like the biggest part the alley has another secret slot where it will be able to store the items that it collects for you but this slot well i kind of like to think of this slot as similar to the bundle like different but similar so the secondary slot that the alley has after you give an alley an item it'll be able to use that secondary slot check out the ui of the bundle right now you can think of that axed out slot as the alley's hand and then that other slot with 64 diamonds that is now fully full as the secret spot i just gave the alley a diamond then there are more diamonds on the ground the alley will actually be able to hold in its inventory up to 64 more diamonds at a time this thing will fly around on the ground and collect up to 64 more diamonds. Then it'll run back over to me and give me all of those diamonds. If it found 66 diamonds on the ground, it'll pick up 64, give me the 64, and then go get the two more. But a stack is not always 64. This is where the bundle comparison comes in big time. Uh, so one single netherite sword, that's actually also a stack of netherite swords. If we go ahead and arm this alley with a netherite sword, drop a couple more on the ground, we'll find out pretty quickly that the alley can only pick up one netherite sword at a time. And so it just picked up a sword, it's looking for me, gives me the sword, then it's gonna wait for a little while, it has a three second cooldown when picking up items, then it'll go back and pick up the other one. That process will continue on and on forever, as long as there's the same exact item on the ground. This is where the bundle comparison falls apart, because the bundle, of course, eventually, when it ever makes it into the game, if it does, it'll be able to pick up a bunch of random things. The alley cannot do that. For example, if I go ahead and give my alley a red tulip, it will not be able to pick up orange tulips. They are both tulips, for sure, but this is a different item, completely. Very interestingly here, the alley is also able to determine different shulker box colors. So first off, check this out. Here I have a yellow shulker box with some things inside of it. If I go ahead and just take the diamond from the alley, go ahead and give it my shulker box right there, and then let's say maybe I drop another shulker box on the ground, this time it's pink and this time it's lime, the alley has no clue, they can't see that. Here's a different yellow shulker box, this one has no items inside of it, if I drop that on the ground, then the alley is fine, it can pick that up. Now check this out, so that shulker box that it just gave me, and then the original shulker box right here. This one has items inside of it, this one does not have items inside of it. Though these items technically have their differences, as long as the shulker box is the same color, the alley can pick it up, and the items will always stay inside of it. The alley has a little bit of trouble distinguishing between different enchantments. So here I have three enchanted books, all of them definitely have different enchantments. If I go ahead and give this alley one of the enchanted books and then drop the other ones on the ground with different enchantments, we'll find that just like with the netherite sword, the alley will actually be able to pick these things up, but it'll only be able to pick up one at a time. One enchanted book is a full stack. Even though the enchantments are different though, the alley can pick them up. That's kind of a bummer. So how about named items and non-named items? Here we have raw gold and here we have ah yes, beans. Let's say we gave our alley friend some beans and then we dropped the raw gold, the unnamed item on the ground, the alley will still be able to pick that up too. If we flip things around the other way, so now it's holding raw gold and it picked up the beans and then eventually brings the beans back to me, the name is still beans. When the alley finds items on the ground, it will go and pick those items up and bring them back to you. Before it brings those items back to you, it will try its hardest to fill up its inventory as much as possible. And once it brings the items back to you, it just kind of throws them at you, like nowhere specific necessarily, just kind of drops them at you, which is nice. However, there's more to the alley than just bringing items to you. You can also pair the alley to a note block and have it bring items to the note block. When it brings items to the note block, it will drop the items at the note block. And no offense to the alley, but from all of my testing with this thing, the dropping, it's a little bit inconsistent. If you're trying to set up a 100% lossless collection system with the alley and a note block, definitely put hoppers all the way around the note block and maybe a hopper minecart below the thing too whether the alley is currently bringing items to you or the note block the alley will not be able to see items that are fully blocked in so these diamonds right here fully encased definitely sitting on the ground but fully blocked in the alley has no clue that they exist even until i open up one of these blocks once i open up the blocks the alley can magically see the diamonds all of a sudden however it might take some time this alley seems to be a little bit confused Alley item collection, yeah, there's kind of a lot to it. To sum that last segment up, short and sweet for you, alleys pick up items. They can bring the items to you or to a note block if it hears a note block. When the alley brings those items to you or the note block, it will kind of just drop them at you or the note block. Can be a little bit inconsistent. 
The ally will carry one item in its hand and up to a stack of that same item in its inventory. But only the same, exactly identical item, for the most part. Wool Occlusion. Wool Occlusion is a fascinating mechanic that mainly involves wool and skulk sensors, but that's not all. Wool Occlusion also involves the alley, so check this out, there's a note block. If I had an alley nearby with an item and I rung this note block, the alley would then be linked to the note block for 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, it'll unlink and link back to you. You can see this linking happening with a subtle particle that goes over to the alley. However, let's say I had a little bit of wool in between the alley and the note block. That alley has an item, I ring this, and it actually can't hear the note block. There's no particle going over to that alley. It's not linking, but the other one, it's linking for sure. This is a pretty cool mechanic that might be most useful in complex alley item sorters. It's a nice attention to the detail on the developer's part. I like it. But yeah, unfortunately, the alley will unlink from a note block after 30 seconds of not hearing a note. So if you want that to not happen, Here's the simple clock for you. Of course, there are many different redstone clocks that you could set up to ring a note block every once in a while. This one is an Ethonian hopper clock. It's pretty simple, and it's very space efficient. To build this hopper clock, these are the exact materials that you're going to need, including the timing items, which can technically be almost anything, and the building blocks right there. It kind of goes without saying, but of course, also, because you're setting up this whole linking system for an LA, you're also going to want to have an LA too. So go ahead and start by placing two sticky pistons two blocks apart with a redstone block in the middle. Diagonally behind both of those, we're going to do solid blocks. Then behind the pistons, we're going to do redstone dust, redstone dust. Next up, we're going to go comparators into both of those blocks. And finally, it's hopper time. Place a hopper down and then crouch, place another hopper looking at the other hopper. Then remove that first hopper and place the other hopper looking into that hopper. Now over here on one of these spots right here, place the note block. Then inside of the hoppers, place the cobblestone and you're good to go. This machine is going to slowly run and ring the note block every once in a while. Whether it's ringing continuously or once every 26 seconds, note block sounds can get a little bit annoying though. Here are some of the sounds that I think are least annoying in the entire game with their names and the blocks that you need below them. Of course, there's a lot more possibilities though. If you don't know all the possibilities, trial and error. Aside from physical damage, the alley has one weakness, the lead. The alley can actually not pick up lead, so if you're setting up an item sorter, you're gonna need like a traditional redstone one for the lead. Right now, as of 22W24A, using a lead on an alley will only put the alley on the lead. Also, as of 22W24A, amazing alley changes. In 1.19.1, the alley is getting a couple new abilities. One of those abilities is purely aesthetic. One of those abilities, I mean, it's duplication, it's multiplication, it's absolutely amazing. You're gonna need two things to get started here, or kind of three. You need an alley, you need a jukebox, and then you need music from that jukebox. Look at this. Look at this, it dances, it spins, it twirls, it's so happy, it loves it. Now, while it's dancing, it does not forget its job, so you could just have, like, music playing around your base, and it will still collect things. Uh, <laughs> absolutely amazing, it's so cool. But, it gets even better. So, it's dancing, I give it Amethyst Shard, because musical, and... To LA. <laughs> I just cloned, I duplicated the LA right there. Now, as you can see, when it duplicates the new LA, it's literally a new LA. You're gonna have to give it a new item. It doesn't duplicate any items or anything like that. It just duplicates itself and it's dancing and it's happy and that one is leaving me. Yeah, make sure you give it an item fast or it will just leave. <laughs> it feels like there are like 50 music discs in the game at this point. What music disc do you need to use? Doesn't matter at all. You can play any music disc at all and it's music to the LA. It just loves them all. For my testing, the Alley's music disc vibe distance seems to be about 10 or so blocks. Let's go ahead and wrap up this week's episode of the Everything Series with Use Talk. The Alley, what do you use it for? So the obvious one, the most obvious one is item collection and maybe even item sorting. You have an Alley, you give it an item, it flies around and collects the items for you, maybe throws it into some kind of sorting machine with note blocks and things like that. Could be pretty useful. A slightly more simple use for the alley that I think is getting a little bit overlooked though is not item collection but item retrieval. So let's say I have a geode farm set up. Amethyst farms can definitely get a little bit chaotic because of the placement of the budding amethyst. Imagine a world where I have this amethyst all cleared out. All I need to do is walk around in here and harvest all of the shards. Nearby I have an alley holding an amethyst shard. It will fly around and pick up all of the amethyst shards off of the ground for me. With my alley flying around near my amethyst farm, I can be certain that I'll never miss a shard again. Of course, this wouldn't stop an amethyst farm, so any farm where you're collecting items, items are falling on the ground, consider putting an alley near that farm to help pick up the items for you. Next up a scenario, a bit of role playing even. Consider this situation. You're down in the caves right now, clearly as I'm down in the caves. But a problem, you've been mining for so long, you are full. You have just brought so many extra pickaxes and you found so many shards that you're just full all the way. If only you had one more inventory space to pick up this pickaxe. Well, uh, check this out, my LA, it has it for me. First things first, give me the flower, you're done. 
Second off, the LA, come back here and hold my shulker box for me. Just carry the shulker box full of whatever items I found down in the cave so I can pick up my other pickaxe. Have the LA carry a shulker box for you and it's extra inventory space. Seeing as the LA has that whole regeneration effect, it should be good in most situations. But don't put the LA underwater, it will drown and don't put it in fire because it will burn. A little bit more role playing. New scenario though, okay? It's October 31st, midnight, and it's dark. The haunting hour. This is not good. What was that? A wolf. Oh no, that's not good. All right, so first off, we can see that the alley kind of has this glowing effect as compared to other mobs like the sheep right there. It's glowing. It's kind of cool. Little fun fact for you. Second off, I'm inside of a haunted house and the alley. The alley is actually invisible. Look at this. Imagine this for some kind of setup. Maybe you're trying to make like a haunted house. You want floating items? Take the alley. Give it an item. Maybe a sword or something scary. Splash it with invisibility. And then you, ha you have a literal ghost floating around with a sword. A literal ghost floating around with a sword. <laughs> it's so cool. Now, of course, you're going to have to continuously give the alley invisibility. But imagine that for some kind of themed build. You splash it with invisibility every once in a while. Not the hardest thing in the world to do. <laughs> it's a literal ghost with items. I love that. And so that'll do it for the LA. That's everything to know. Wait, what's that? Bonus, bonus round? round? Bonus round for the people who made it all the way through the video. I appreciate you. Some fun facts. This one goes out to all of my fans of definitions out there. The LA, it means to relieve or alleviate. The vex means to anger or worry. Those are opposite meanings. The LA and the vex are quite literally opposites. Sick of your LA? Well, the problem solved. To put it in a little bit of water, we'll trap it in water and you can drown it. Okay, don't do that. But you're a monster. That's not even fun. That's not, it's a fact, but it's not fun. Have your LA found themselves in the unfortunate circumstance? Are you a monster and has your LA found itself in the unfortunate circumstance where it's taking a lot of damage really quick? Well, quickly, give it a totem of undying, let it take all of the damage that it needs to take, and then eventually, uh, the regen kind of offsets the damage. <laughs> this is hard to show off. All right, well, look, the big one here is that the LA can use the totem of undying. If it takes enough damage for long enough and gets to that unfortunate point, then it'll use the totem of undying, and, and it's safe. Yay. And you will never place a lava bucket on your alley again. Because that was your last totem. That's it. That's everything to know about the alley as of Minecraft Snapshot 22W24A. If anything major, major changes in the future, I'll drop a pinned comment down below. Have you rescued an alley in survival yet? What's your favorite use for the thing? Let me know down below. If you enjoyed today's episode, two things. Please consider dropping a like. It helps out a huge time. And if you'd like more videos just like this one, check out the Everything series on The Warden next. I'll leave the playlist in the end card. Michael H, Rob, and Darkland Studios, my patrons, thank you so much for the support. Episode topics, drop them down below or on the subreddit, r slash waddles. Thank you so much for watching. It's been me, your boy, with another episode of the Everything series. Goodbye, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.